let's continue our adventure in math. Many people do not like to work with fractions or decimals. So I'm going to show you kind of a cool trick we can use today that is going to clear our fractions and decimals to make it easier for us to solve the equation. So let's start with fractions. So the key to this, look at the denominators. Now, we want to clear the fraction. So what we're looking for is we're looking for a least common multiple of those denominators. I know 2, 4, and 6 all go into 12. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 12. Now remember, when I multiply that, that denominator can be reduced out of that numerator of 12 by thinking about what can I divide into both of them. So I can divide this by 4 and this by 4. That becomes 3, that becomes 1. So really this becomes a new fraction of 3 times 3 over 1 which is 9. I just got rid of the fractions. So I can do the same thing on this side. Now this side, the way I look at it, is I take each one individually. And I think to myself, well 12 divided by 6 is 2. And now it's like distributive property. And I do 2 times negative 5 is negative 10x. I just got rid of that fraction. Now I keep that addition sign and I do 12 divided by 2 is 6. And then it's 6 times 1 is 6. So now I have a new equation. I have negative 10x plus 6 equals 9. No more fractions to work with. So now I just solve my two-step equation. So I start on the side that has the variable. I need to get rid of this plus 6. I subtract 6. But whatever I do on one side, I have to do on the other. I'm left with negative 10x and I'm left with 3. I still need to get x by itself, so I'm going to divide both sides by negative 10. I'm left with x equals negative 3 tenths, and there's my answer. I got to do most of the equation without having to use any fractions. We can also do that with decimals, and the way that we do that is we take a look at the place value of the decimals. And we're looking to multiply by the largest place value. So I can see I have a tenth, a hundredth, and a tenth. So I'm going to take the largest place value, which is a hundred. But I have to multiply both sides by that. When I multiply by a hundred, it's going to move those decimal points. And you're going to move one decimal point for each of those zeros. And I'm going to move it to the right. So I'm going to move it one place. Oh, I'm out of numbers. I'm going to annex a zero. So that becomes 230. Notice, no more decimals. Now I'm going to do the same thing for both of these numbers. So I'm going to move this decimal point two places. I get 514. I'm going to move it one. Oh, got to annex a zero. I get 80M. I just cleared all my decimals. So now we're back to a two-step equation. So I'm going to start on the side that has the variable. I'm going to subtract. 514 from both sides. Now I have a positive and a negative, but I have far more negative, so I know my answer is going to be a negative. And if I take 514 and subtract 230 from it, 4 minus 0 is 4, 11 minus 3 is 8, 4 minus 2 is 2. I get negative 284. Now this side I still have 80 m. So in order to get m by itself, I'm going to divide by 80 on both sides. So m equals negative 284 80s. Now remember, if I start with decimals, I should end with decimals. So if I take a calculator and I actually put negative 284 divided by 80 in, I get negative 3 and 55 hundredths. It's an easier way sometimes for most of us to work through equations when we don't have to worry about fractions or decimals. It's just an option. It's a trick for you if you want to use it. I think you should give it a try. See if you like it. The challenge is up to you.